This is a fictionalized story of Jane, the would-be queen who ruled for only four days. She was eventually executed, but the TV show twists the tale into fantasy. A noble lady named Jane fixes up an ointment to help her friend's itchiness in her nether region. They got crabs back then, too. Jane tells her she'll need a few weeks to heal, to which she complains that she can't abstain for that long. Her best friend slash servant named Susanna comments that it isn't hard for Jane to do since she's saving herself for marriage. But Jane corrects her and says she's saving herself for herself. She points out that she may never marry, causing her friends to laugh. Her friend asks what her mother would say about it, but Jane doesn't care since she has bigger plans. Jane reveals she's writing the world's first complete book about England's medicinal herbs and their uses. She shows her book full of written texts and drawings and plans to publish and sell it, hoping to make enough money for her to live independently. There's a knock on the door and Susanna answers it, who tells Jane that the Duke of Leicester is coming. Jane rushes out with a basket, heading to the garden to collect flowers. After obtaining the flowers, Jane dashes to the main entrance, just in time for the carriage's arrival. An old man staggers out of the carriage and the girls bow before him. They have lunch together, and Lester rests his nasty foot on top of the table to ease his gout. While Jane's mother and sisters are disgusted by it, Jane is fascinated and tells Lester that cherries will help, according to what she read. Lester laughs about Jane reading books and says that he had never permitted his wives to read or own any books. I can tell he's uneducated with his butt, ugly, incestuous, inbred-looking ass. Jane's mother, Frances, asks Lester about confirmation. And Lester brightly informs Jane that she's bestowed the gift of marriage. Jane is suddenly overwhelmed and lashes out at Lester. Frances excuses Jane and escorts her to her bedroom, apologizing to Lester. In Jane's room, Frances tells Jane she has no choice but to marry her off since she refuses to entertain any suitors. Frances reveals that Lord Guilford Dudley will be her husband, and Jane gets upset since Guilford is known to be a vile man. Frances explains that the marriage will protect them since Lester will stop providing for them. Jane cusses her out, and Frances tries to smack her, but Jane defends herself. She tells her mother that she'll do everything in her power to get out of the marriage, but Frances laughs at her, saying she has no power. Then Frances tells her she burned her book, leaving Jane to cry in front of the fireplace. Later at night, Jane sneaks out of her room to look for Susanna, who's getting her flower pollinated. Jane tells her that they're leaving and heading for a village where no one can recognize them. Susanna thinks she's crazy, but Jane tells her she's been trapped at home her whole life and doesn't want to be trapped in a marriage either. Jane tries to convince her that it isn't safe, but Jane is persistent and would rather face the harsh outside world rather than her mother. When Susanna tells her they'll need money, Jane holds her fingers up, suggesting to sell her mother's ring. The girls venture off into the woods, ready to start a new life. Suddenly, they hear horns and barking from the distance, prompting them to run. They hide as the guards and dogs pass by them, but they soon bump into Frances. Frances claims that Susanna stole her ring and kidnapped Jane, and the guards grab a hold of them. Jane tries to explain she's behind everything, but Frances insists she didn't do it and says that Susanna will be sentenced to death. Susanna apologizes to Jane before breaking free from the guard's grasp and shifting into a hawk. Jane watches her fly away, surprised that Susanna is an Ethian, a human who can take an animal form. I was always hoping someone would adapt Animorphs into a show. Frances tells Jane that there are consequences for hiding an Ethian, but Jane replies that she wasn't aware that Susanna is one. Jane dives into the history of Ethians and discovers that they were exiled by King Henry, forcing them into lives of hardship and crime instead of allowing them to live with Verity, who are regular humans. As the preparations for her marriage to Guilford continue, Frances pays a visit to the Dudley estate. Jane quickly runs after her and tells the oarsman to follow Frances' boat. There, Jane boldly tells Lord Dudley that she doesn't want to marry his son. Lord Dudley only smiles at her and says that nobody cares what she wants. Jane leaves the estate in anger, but encounters a man being rude to children. Jane stands up for the kids and tells him to surrender his coins to them. The man obliges and leaves, and the kid tells her that he's Lord Dudley's son. Jane realizes it's the man she is to marry, and is mortified how much of a sissy bitch he is. Desperate to prevent the marriage, Jane turns to her cousin, King Edward. 
She visits him and is heartbroken to find him in poor health. Edward confides in Jane that she must proceed with the marriage since he has already approved it. For those angry about a black king, may I remind you there are anamorphs in this show. He explains that just as he had to accept the burdens of kingship against his will, she too must fulfill her duty for the greater good of the kingdom. Edward reveals that he has a fatal illness and the chances of being the first to recover from it are low. Edward's sisters, Mary and Bess, arrive to visit him. Mary instructs Edward's advisor, Lord Seymour, to bring a pie she had made for the king. After eating the pie, Edward begins to choke. The guards rush to call Dr. Butts, but Jane intervenes, asking Bess to find a lilac flower. Jane instructs Edward to bite the flower, which immediately alleviates his condition. I hate to make him the butt of jokes, but man's teeth doesn't look too bad for England. Jane insists she can't leave with Edward's condition, but Lord Seymour sends her home, insisting the king needs to rest. As Edward's health continues to decline, Lord Dudley arrives at the royal court. Seymour and Dudley each attempt to influence Edward to designate their preferred successor. Seymour wants it passed down to Mary, and Dudley wants it passed down to Jane, who has direct lineage in royalty. Edward ultimately writes his will, sealing it with instructions that it be opened only after his death. On her way home, Jane's chariot breaks down. Seizing the opportunity for some solitude, she decides to ride a horse back alone. Meanwhile, Seymour tries to coax Edward into eating more of Mary's pie, but Edward's loyal dog, Petunia, intervenes by biting Seymour and causing the pie to drop. Furious, Seymour orders the guards to kill the dog, but Edward intervenes, dismissing Seymour and protecting Petunia. As Jane is free to roam, guards suddenly burst through the woods in search of her. She takes a detour to a lively tavern, where she is struck by the sight of men and women having fun. In the tavern, Jane's attention is drawn to a captivating man. They engage in playful banter, enjoying each other's company. Suddenly, royal guards storm the tavern to arrest Archer, a notorious thief. However, Archer reveals himself to be an Ethian and transforms into a bear, causing chaos and panic among everyone. That's not the usual types of bear. I tend to see at a gay bar. The man assists Jane in finding a hiding spot amidst the chaos and urges her to leave with him. However, Jane spots Susanna and decides to speak with her friend instead. As Jane attempts to converse with Susanna, the royal guard Joe catches them. In a quick decision, Jane shoves Susanna out of the tavern and allows herself to be arrested in her place. Meanwhile, at the king's palace, Edward's dog, Petunia, reveals her true form by transforming into a woman. She prevents Edward from consuming poisoned food, explaining that she was sent by his grandmother to protect him. Edward is bewildered, believing his grandmother to be deceased. Petunia shows him a locket as proof of her claim and informs him that someone has been trying to kill him by poisoning his meals. While Petunia grabs a robe to cover her bare body, Edward realizes that he may be a closeted member of the LGBT community. As Mary and Seymour are having a secretive rendezvous, Mary questions him about their scheme to poison and eliminate Edward. Seymour, anxious about her response, conceals his concerns that Edward's will might designate Jane as the heir. Meanwhile, Jane is about to be dunked into a well as punishment when Francis arrives just in time to rescue her and take her back home. Jane pleads with her mother to stop her impending marriage to Guilford. Francis, however, threatens that if Jane refuses the marriage, their younger sister Catherine will be forced to wed their great-uncle Lester. Reluctantly, Jane prepares for her wedding, still haunted by thoughts of the man she met at the tavern. To avoid the ceremony, she plans to feign illness using Beetlejuice. As Edward escorts Jane down the aisle, she is shocked to discover that Guilford is the very man she encountered at the tavern. Suddenly, Jane bleeds from her mouth during the ceremony and falls to the ground. But Guilford sees through her tricks. Jane lies on Dr. Butt's examination table as he tries to determine if she has contracted the illness rumored to afflict King Edward. Using someone else's piss, the doctor swishes it in his mouth to help him detect any anomalies in Jane's blood. But he finds nothing. They always told me these were the golden years. They didn't tell me about the golden showers. Realizing there's no escape, Jane decides to abandon her act and heads to the church to marry Guilford. At the wedding reception, Jane and Guilford engage in petty arguments. Francis and Dudley insist that their children remain civil toward each other until the betting ceremony later that evening. As Dudley makes a toast to celebrate the union, 
Bess delivers her congratulations on behalf of King Edward. At the King's Palace, Mary and Seymour attend to Edward, who is merely pretending to be ill. Once they leave, Petunia transforms into her human form and informs Edward that she can detect the scent of poison. She suggests that they venture to the market to trace the source of the poison and uncover who is plotting against the king. Petunia insists that Edward promise to visit his grandmother after he gets revenge. Meanwhile, Jane struggles with her growing fascination for Guilford. At the wedding, Jane's youngest sister, Margaret, prompts a kiss between Jane and Guilford, sparking cheers from the guests. Guilford twirls Jane and attempts to kiss her, but pushes her away, leaving her in suspense. Jane spots an Ethian attempting to steal silver coins and decides to follow him. She inquires about Susanna, but the thief denies knowing her before making a swift getaway. Later, Jane and Guilford prepare for their bedding ceremony. As the maids help Jane undress, Francis offers her advice on handling eggplants. Meanwhile, Dudley urges Guilford to consummate the marriage quickly, emphasizing the importance of this union for their family's reputation. During the ceremony, the wedding guests watch and cheer as Jane and Guilford awkwardly maneuver under the blanket, putting on a show. Is this like prehistoric OnlyFans? Eventually, the guests leave the newlyweds alone. In private, Jane and Guilford have a heated argument. Guilford asserts his dominance, calling himself Jane's Lord and commanding her obedience. Angered, Jane throws wine in his face. Jane angrily enters the dressing room but gets stuck. I don't know about you, but I like being dominated in bed. Meanwhile, Francis ends up in an affair with Stan, using the opportunity to probe into the Dudley family's financial situation. Stan reveals that Dudley likes to spend money, but doesn't do well in earning. Sis is surprised she fumbled that bag. Elsewhere, Mary and Seymour share a moment where Seymour asks her to be patient until she becomes queen. He presents her with a ring, but she chooses the one given to him by her father, King Henry. Later that night, Jane requests a maid to free her from the dressing room. She wonders about Guilford's whereabouts and discovers he is at the stables. When Jane arrives at the stables, she finds Guilford showering, completely naked. As she watches, her irritation with Guilford for abandoning her in the dressing room resurfaces. Guilford tells her to leave for some privacy, but Jane says they're married, so it shouldn't matter. Suddenly, Guilford unexpectedly transforms into a horse, leaving her stunned. Well, now we know why he hung like a horse. Dudley arrives and informs Jane that Guilford is also an Ethian, cursed to change into a horse from sunrise to sunset. Jane is further astonished when Dudley reveals that she will be going on a honeymoon with Guilford. Jane insists she won't stay married to an Ethian, but Dudley warns that ending an Ethian Verity marriage means death since it's forbidden. With no choice, Jane agrees to keep the secret. Meanwhile, Edward and Petunia go to the local market and find out he is being poisoned with a drug called Tofana. He also learns that someone with an eye ring had bought the poison. Edward asks Jane about the poison. She tells him Tofana is deadly and in small doses, it gets into the lungs and blood. Edward is scared and argues with Jane, who is already upset about her marriage to an Ethian. Jane goes back to the Dudley estate while Edward returns to the royal palace. He tells his subjects that he knows someone is poisoning him. Seymour and Dudley promise to find the poisoner, but Edward dismisses them. Seymour then tells Mary that the king is suspicious, making her take control of the situation. Dudley, worried about the throne, sends Stan to retrieve the king's will. As Jane heads to her honeymoon, a man attacks her and asks for valuables. Jane rushes to open the chest full of wedding gifts, but is surprised to see it's only filled with books about medication. The man tries to take Jane instead, but Jane throws the books at him, causing him to run away and shift into a goat. As Jane looks back at the books, she's surprised to learn that Guilford also reads about medicine. Meanwhile, Stan meets Frances and informs her that King Edward's will is missing. Seymour, Mary, Bess, and Dudley gather in Edward's room and accuse Dudley of being the poisoner. Dudley tries to defend himself, but Seymour slips a packet of Tafana into Dudley's pocket claiming Dudley is poisoning the king to make Jane the queen. Edward orders Dudley's arrest, but before that happens, Mary attempts to poison Edward again. Edward notices the eye ring around Mary's neck and realizes she's the one trying to poison him. Mary sprinkles the poison onto his face, causing him to fall unconscious. Later that night, Guilford returns to his human form and tells Jane he is willing to divorce her if she helps him find a cure for his daily transformation into an Ethian. Jane agrees and expresses her desire for independence and freedom. Guilford escorts Jane to her room, 
assuring her that they don't need to fulfill their marital obligations, but an undeniable attraction lingers between them. Edward manages to escape from the room where Mary and Seymour had confined him. Seeing the open window, Seymour and Mary assume that Edward fell while trying to escape and believe that the king is dead. What did you guys think of this one? Should we cover more?